go away for all the information and uh, and gather all all our uh, uh, analytics and uh, uh, medical information and uh, make our decisions based on that. Jessica Camarado, MLB.com. Hey, Mike. Um, at the alternate training site, these guys aren't able to pitch and, and play in traditional games. So what's, what criteria are you looking for when you're evaluating them after their performances? Well, it's, it's a tool to, uh, to utilize when we're, you know, we'll, we'll have our coaching staff uh, evaluate all the players down there. Uh, it's actually a good training ground. It's, it's more like playing instructional league games, you know, a long instructional league, if you will. Uh, but, uh, you know, we thought it was vital to get some of our good prospects down there. And, and uh, so they didn't have kind of a wasted, uh, uh, you know, three quarters of a, of a season with no minor league baseball. So uh, I like the, pr uh, the, uh, uh, the projection of, of a lot of those guys. They've, uh, uh, they've, they've performed really well. And uh, I, I thought that this was really a vital, a vital use of, of our alternative uh, facility. Uh, on the major league level, one player who really emerged this season has been Tanner Rainey. And Dave talked about how he saw the potential kind of building over the over the months. What have you seen from Tanner, just the growth that he's made, uh, being able to step into the late inning role? Well, you know, he's uh, he's been terrific for us. Uh, you know, he came, he came from a very limited major league experience when we traded for him. Uh, you know, there were bouts of wildness and, uh, you know, he was a thrower and not a pitcher. Uh, his stuff was, uh, you know, unquestionable, but, uh, you know, his pitchability was, uh, was something that, that allow us to, allowed us to, uh, to trade for him. Uh, I, I think our, our major league and minor league coaches did a great job with him, uh, not only last year, giving him a foundation uh, of, uh, of getting to the big leagues, uh, but, uh, but specifically this year in, in our two spring trainings uh, to see the, the, the uh, progression he's made and can, and commanding two of those uh, extremely uh, uh, productive pitches for him has been great. Uh, I, there was never a question about his uh, about his uh, makeup or willingness to take the ball in big situations. So uh, you know he's proved us uh, our, our judgment correct there that uh, that he has the late inning mentality uh, to pitch uh, you know real leverage meaningful innings. Uh, co couple that with the stuff that he had. And now, kind of all coming together, where he's pitching better, throwing uh, a, a lot of quality strikes, and uh, and and really attacking the hitters. I think is is the the main reason he's had such great success. Pretty drolly, the athletic. Hi, yeah, Mike. I think it's later this week that teams are allowed to start like some kind of instructional league uh, mm -hmm. at their alternate site. Have you guys determined uh, a, a potential plan for that? Yeah, we've we've got plans in the works. Our uh, our goal is to is to have a uh, have a full uh, instructional league. I, I'm not even sure what they're calling it this year, but it's some type of uh, uh, instructional league uh, in uh, in West Palm. Uh, there's still a lot of hoops that we have to jump through, but uh, our plan is to is to do that, and we think it's extremely important for us to uh, to get some of our uh, our prospects. Uh, some type of, of plan and get our eyes on them before spring training next year. So uh, our, our plan is to uh, is to move forward with that. Uh, I, again, it is nothing that uh, that's concrete right now, other than that uh, we're, uh, we're we're progressing towards that end. And have you? Um, will it be guys who are like Cavalli, guys who were at Fredericksburg, or guys who had no minor league season, or kind of a mix? It, it'll be a mix. It'll be uh, it'll be a. a a uh, expanded amount of players. Uh, a, a lot of our, a lot of our uh, current draft class this year, who we haven't seen play as a professional as yet. Uh, uh, also, uh, some of our uh, more traditional instructional league types uh, will be there. You know, high, you know, high profile prospects al along with guys that uh, we want to see more of. So, uh, yeah, it's it's going to be extremely important for us, and it'll be a, a, a really good venue for us to uh, to get these guys some professional. Uh, work under their belts, and so next it kind of it, it kind of allows us to go into spring training next year, which we hope will it'd be a, a normal spring training, uh, not having to see them for the first time when they arrive next year. Right. I'm assuming that West Palm Beach is just a better facility-wise, like more well-rounded with everything than Fredericksburg. The, the plan, the plan uh, as of right now, is to be in West Palm. Yes. Um, have you guys heard about the draft order? What that will be for clubs for next year? We have not uh, had a, a, any type of full commitment on what what the order is. Obviously, there's a lot of games to be played, and uh, and not sure what the what the uh, you know the 
protocol for uh, for the commissioner doling out the uh, the selection order yet. Yeah. Thank you. Todd Ivis, NBC Sports Washington. Hey, Mike. You guys are two weeks away from the end of the season. So as we sit here today, kind of what do you see uh, with your group and what do you want to do here in the next two weeks, whether it's keep pushing or see young guys or some blend of that? Oh, you know, we're here to win games and uh, uh, that that's our goal is to, to win today's game and to uh, uh, win as many games as we can. Uh, with that said, you're going to see a, a steady diet of, uh, of our of our young players and uh, and players that we're you know we're committed to for the long term, uh, but with that said, we're we're still trying to win baseball games, and uh, and uh, you know each each and every time out, we're uh, we're expecting to win and uh, and uh, disappointed when we lose. Uh, do you know anything further about Steven's timeline and kind of what he can do, what he can't do, and when those things can occur? Well, Steven, Steven's uh, you know uh, full full time with our uh, physical therapists uh, and. Uh, I don't think anything has changed with our, our long-term prognosis with him from uh, from what we had in the past. So he, okay. we, and we, is, we plan on him being ready for spring training. Okay. And this is super murky, more murky than usual. Are you guys under the CBT this year? The league told me the CBT is in effect, but didn't define what it is. So are you guys under again? Uh, yes, we are, we are under and uh, the, C, the CBT is murky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Jesse Doherty, Washington Post, from an Uber. Hey, Mike. Hey, sorry, I forgot my phone charger at home, so I'm kind of scrambling here. Um, you guys have obviously a bunch of free agents uh, on your – or potential free agents on your roster, depending on who you want to bring back. Uh, how difficult is it to assess their performance in this season? Um, with you know, We've talked about all the challenges of injuries and the ramp-up and all these things, whether it's pitchers or hitters. Like, How are you going to assess and how, 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 how tricky is that? Well, I think we, we're going to have a good feel for all of our players. Uh, you know, we've I've seen them play every day since uh, you know since sure. February, so uh, we we feel that we'll have a good a good handle on uh, where they're at uh, health wise, performance wise, you know, future performance and, and that type of thing. So we feel confident that we'll uh, we'll make the right decisions on on, on those players, and uh, and you know that's that I, I don't I don't think that there's any reason. With the uh, you know with the with the COVID uh, protocols and, and the shortened season that uh, that we didn't get a good look at uh, at you know what type of players that we have. And obviously, you, you mentioned earlier we'll we'll discuss these things at a later date in terms of who's going to be back and whatnot. But there likely will be some guys from the World Series team who may have played their last game at Nats Park without fans there. Um, obviously, send offs are a big part of baseball tradition and and fans grow connections with these guys. So how much of a bummer is it for you that maybe um, that's not going to happen this year, that that traditional sort of saying goodbye or this last standing ovation or curtain call is not going to be in place potentially for some guys? Well, it's one of the disappointing parts of, of the, uh, you know, the COVID season of 2020. So, uh, but uh, these, uh, the players, they know how we feel about them here in DC. They know how we feel about them in the front office and in, in the coaches room. So uh, I think that, uh, that, that, uh, We'll, uh, you know, we'll we'll navigate that seamlessly, and I think that there'll be, uh, you know, there'll be, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of good feelings towards uh, towards the players because we've been we've been through a lot together, and we've accomplished uh, uh, a massive amount of of, uh, of achievements together. And I know the uh, the full season autopsy comes later, as as you as you put it. But uh, what did what do you put your thumb on with sort of the bigger issues this year? Uh, that led to, um, you know, less than satisfactory start for you guys? And then maybe related to that, what have you seen in the last week when the play has maybe ticked up a bit? Well, I just, uh, you know, we, we see that uh, there's, uh, there's, you know, certain, uh, certain players uh, take to, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the start and stop of, uh, of the season different than others. Uh, you know, I, I think that uh, you saw the, uh, the successes that we had in 2019 of having a veteran laden uh, team uh, that uh, that played together th through uh, you know through the good times and the bad times. Uh, we we navigated that 162 plus uh, plus the playoffs very very well. Uh, and I think you saw the start and stop uh, adversely affect the the those same type of veteran players because uh, you know obviously it's much more difficult for the veteran players to to go through the spring training one and two if you will the ramp up the quick ramp up that they had to go through. Uh, it's a lot more difficult for those for those players than it is for uh, you know those those younger 21 20 22 year old players uh, 
you know, they're, uh, you know, nothing's, uh, n you know, nothing seems to affect them physically, or those type of, you know, those type of young guys. So uh, I think that had a, had a lot to do with it. You know, obviously injuries, injuries played uh, a, a big part of, uh, of, of what we're, what we've been doing, you know, throughout the season. And uh, I think that, uh, you know, our, uh, the, the the reason that we had to focus in on and rely on some of these young players at uh, at such a, a a young part of their developmental career was be because of the injuries and because of the uh, uniqueness of this uh, of this sixty game type of season. <clears throat> Pretty drolly, the athletic. Um, one of those call ups, Riz is obviously not young in Yadiel Hernandez. I'm wondering, mm -hmm. you guys signed him when he was 29. Uh, Obviously, a terrific story, but what made you want to take that risk on a player who, you know, was already uh, considered old by baseball standards? Yeah, you know, he was a good veteran hitter uh, on a, on a Cuban national team. Uh, he was, you know, left-handed bat that uh, that uh, our international scouts liked and uh, and wanted to sign. And uh, you know, when uh, when those scouts are are very passionate about wanting to, to sign a player, you know, they like the, the skill set, but they love the makeup. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, you know, I owe it to those to scouts to reward them for their hard work and signing players that, that they want. If, you know, if all the, uh, the, ter the determining factors uh, fit for us and they did. Uh, and, you know, the reason that he got to the big leagues is, is nothing else than he earned it. He had a terrific season uh, in 2019 in, in AAA and, uh, and earned his way to the big leagues. And if you don't get to the big leagues after the season he had in AAA last season, when do you, you know, when do you get promoted and what message does that send to the rest of the guys down in, in the minor leagues? So, uh, you know, we like to reward guys for, for playing well and being uh, good teammates. And uh, he certainly has been that throughout his, uh, his tenure here with the Naps. And Mark Zuckerman, MassesSports.com. Uh, hey, just to make sure we ask this question, um, has there been any progress on talks with Davey on the new contract? We, we've been we've been in, com in uh, conversations with his uh, with his representation, and uh, I feel uh, optimistic that uh, we will get something done. And uh, you know, it's something that I want to happen. And uh, I think that uh, it, with uh, I think Davey wants the same same uh, end result. So uh, we're in conversations right now, and you know that's you know we you know we're not going to talk about negotiations or where we're at, but uh, we're we're talking, and I think that's a good thing. Anything else for Mike? Todd Davis, NBC Sports Washington. Just real quick, uh, is there any value to you in like hopping a Jackson Rutledge up here for a start to get him in this environment this year because it doesn't affect service time or or someone similar or do you just want those guys to stay there and then go on to the instructional league whatever form that takes well we don't pop anybody up to the big leagues it's 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 a decision that's that is well thought out and well crafted by many many people uh, you know that's that entails scouting Player development, player people, experience. You know, are they ready for the big leagues? And uh, and we've never had an issue with starting anybody's clock. And that's not one of a uh, one of the uh, precursors to bringing a guy to the big league. It's that uh, he when when he gets to the big leagues, we want him to stay in the big leagues, to be ready to to perform in the big leagues. And uh, and with the the limited professional. Uh, experience with uh, the Rutledges and uh, the Cavellis and, and, and those type of guys, uh, they're certainly, we don't feel that they're, they're ready to compete without, you know, some of them pitching a professional inning. And wh where's Denenberg right now and what is his health status? Denenberg is rehabbing. He's in his throwing program. He's progressing uh, in his mound progression and, uh, and we're uh, optimistic that he'll be full goal by spring training uh, next year.